Now we'll shift our attention towards paramagnetism and diamagnetism. Now we'll take a look at the definitions in just a moment, but let's take a look over here at figure and activities and really understand uh, what's taking place here. When we have liquid oxygen and we pour it over the poles of a strong magnet, it's going to stick to the poles of that magnet. Whereas if we take, looking here at figure 20, if we take liquid nitrogen and we pour it, it's going to be slightly repelled by a magnetic field. Now, why is that? Why is it that uh, oxygen here is going to be sticking, whereas liquid nitrogen here is going to be repelled by a magnetic field? Well, Let's first address as to why liquid nitrogen is slightly repelled by a magnetic field, and then we'll take a look at why uh, liquid oxygen sticks to the poles of a magnet. And to do so, we're going to need to call upon the magnetic quantum number. Now, if we recall, uh, we had covered the magnetic quantum number earlier in this lecture series under the lecture quantum numbers, and we had stated that all electrons spin. And as a result of that spin, a tiny magnetic field is going to be produced. Now, when uh, there's two electrons in an orbital, and recall each orbital can have up to two electrons, when we have two electrons in an orbital, the two electrons are going to be spin paired, and their magnetic spin is going to be canceled out. Now, if we apply that same line of thought to, uh, uh, to molecules, for example, if we have uh, if all the electrons in a molecule are going to be spin paired, then that molecule is said to be diamagnetic. And uh, it's said to be diamagnetic because it has no electron spin related magnetic field of its own. Thus, substances that are, uh, as it says here, unpaired, the substances that contain unpaired electrons when and uh, they're going to experience repulsion when an external magnetic field is applied as we see here with uh, with nitrogen as such next moving on most molecules are said are uh, they most molecules are going to be diamagnetic however oxygen is not diamagnetic oxygen is paramagnetic as it's attracted to the poles of the magnet now, a molecule is said to be paramagnetic when it contains uh, one or more unpaired electrons within its structure. Furthermore, the more unpaired electrons uh, a, a substance has, the stronger that paramagnetic attraction is going to be. Now, uh, let's take a moment and we'll read our definitions. We'll begin here with diamagnetism. Diamagnetism is a type of magnetism that causes a substance with no unpaired electrons to be weakly repelled from a magnetic field. Whereas paramagnetism is a property that a substance possesses if it contains one or more unpaired electrons. A paramagnetic substance is drawn into a magnetic field. Now, we'll, uh, if we, as we're going to see shortly, the Lewis dot structure and the valence bond theory, they're not complex enough to really demonstrate us the uh, magnetic properties of O2. For that, we're going to need to call upon the, uh, the molecular orbital theory. But just before we do that, let's uh, take a moment and examine uh, paired and unpaired electrons in uh, paramagnetic and diamagnetic atoms and ions. Now, looking here, we're being asked to draw the orbital diagram for each atom ion and determine whether uh, each is diamagnetic or paramagnetic. And here we have chromium, palladium, sulfur, and uh, iron, right? Now, we've already covered electron configuration extensively in the lecture preceding this one and within this lecture series. Thus, for the orbital diagram, I'm just going to uh, dis uh, display them as they come up for each uh, atom or ion. And furthermore, we should also note that chromium and palladium, if we recall, they, both of them have anomalies in their electron configuration. And we talked about anomalies in electron configuration uh, extensively in that lecture as well. Thus, uh, the orbital diagram is going to be uh, slightly, a little bit more challenging than uh, for the rest. Okay, for chromium, it has 24 electrons, right? And we would anticipate that the orbital box diagram for chromium is going to be as follows. Now, due to the presence of unpaired electrons, do we anticipate that chromium is going to be paramagnetic or diamagnetic? That's right. If you had guessed uh, 
paramagnetic field are correct. Now, how about for uh, 